Hello everybody, this is John Buck back with another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. In this video we're going to look at an example of, of a first order Bode plot for a more complicated system. This video assumes you've already watched the, the background video on Bode plots, so if you haven't, uh, you're getting them in the wrong order, so stop this video, go back and find the one on the theory of first order Bode plots and where they come from, and then come back to this one and watch the example work through. Okay, so the example we're going to look at in this video is the case where the, the uh, h of j omega, I guess I haven't actually taken a magnitude yet, so let me fix that. Okay, this is a system, I'm going to look at the example where h of j omega is 2 plus j omega times 4 over 1 plus j omega times 200. Okay, and so this is a, a more complicated example than, than the original derivation we did, but we can see that we'll use the same parts, the same approach here for both pieces, uh, and that relies on, on an important property that, like I said earlier, we're going to take the log magnitude of both sides here. I'm going to, if I get 20 log of h of j omega, I can use the properties of logs on the right-hand side to, to break this into some simple first-order terms rather than worry about the whole thing at once. Okay, so I got the 20 log of the numerator minus 20 log the magnitude of the denominator, and now this is, this is, again, sort of revealing our, our big overall strategy, which is the idea that Bode plots let us break complicated systems into simple ones. Let me talk about that more generally just for a second. Right? If I say, I've, in general, if I had some h of j omega that's some numerator num magnitude over several terms in the denominator, this, again, is where the logs, the power of the log really comes to our rescue. Right? They're taking 20 log of both sides, and the log breaks it up into a sum of things. Right, so I can say this is now just three pieces that are being added and subtracted, and each of these are, if they're a classic first-order Bode plot, that says all I need to do is, instead of figuring out some complicated function of omegas with multiple terms, I just need to make these simple straight-line plots one at a time, and then when I'm done, uh, add and subtract them together to get the overall response. And so that's, again, the, the, the advantage of doing things in DB, where the log turns multiplications into additions, and I just end up getting a good approximation of the system with adding and subtracting straight lines. So let's go back to our specific, oh, and I, sh I should mention, when we think of it that way, there's really only four common factors we need to watch out for. All right, the four things that I see most often is I'll have a constant, a j omega, maybe in the numerator, in this case I've shown the numerator could also be in the denominator, a numerator first order term that looks like this, and then this is the one we already saw, the, the denominator term like this. So k doesn't depend on omega. So if I think about a, a, a factor of this term when I take the magnitude, I get 20 log k here. Now for the next term, if I take the log magnitude, well the ma imaginary part goes away and I'm left that I have 20 log magnitude of j omega is just 20 log omega. So this is just, it, uh, it's the same for all omega. There's no two regions to it for this example or for this kind, and so I just get a straight line. Because it's first order in omega, first power, this line just goes up with a slope of 20 dB per decade, as we saw in the last video. And the other important point, then, is to note that when omega equals 1, log of 1 is 0. So the point where it crosses 0 dB for something in this form is at log of 1. For the numerator type term, now I do have two things two terms. For small omega, it'll be constant. For big omega, it will be dominated by this term. And the crossover, like we said, happens when the real and imaginary parts are equal, which is when omega equals a. So if I make that plot, right, so numerator factors like 1 plus j omega over alpha will be constant. For small omegas, they're zero, at 0 dB. And then when omega gets to alpha, we get this other thing with the plus 20 dB per decade slope, because the right-hand term is dominating. And the bottom one is the example we already saw earlier that will be constant for small omega, but then instead of going up, it goes down by 20 dB per decade. So let me draw that one. Okay, so I made this one a little thicker to make it clear and move the line up. So here's 0 dB going along for small omegas, and until we get to the crossover frequency when omega equals B, because that's the point where the real and imaginary parts are equal, beyond that it goes down by 20 dB per decade, because this omega in the dom denominator is dominating, because it's in the denominator, it's pulling things down. So that's sort of the basic vocabulary we need for these, these four pieces, 
when we factor things out. So now let's go back to our example and see how that helps us. Well, looking at our example, I can say, well, this looks kind of like the numerator term. This looks like the denominator term, but except this one doesn't begin with a one. So this is a good example I set up this way to show you. Well, what do I do if I, if I don't have a one in front is I just factor the constant out to get it so I do. So let's do that, right? So if I factor that two out front, I have two times one plus j omega times two. And now I can use the log property to break this one into two more terms. So now I have the sum of three terms, and I've written them in color anticipating I'm going to be sketching them shortly. So I have a constant term that looks like that first one. Here's a numerator term, and here's a denominator term. So let's see what these look like when I, uh, let me just maybe scroll up to make some space to sketch them. So for the first term, I get just the constant. Right, so this first term is, is uh, 20 log 10 of 2, which works out to be 6 dB if you get your calculator out. And it doesn't depend on omega at all, so it's just a constant. The second term is going to be one that's flat, and then because it's a numerator term and this is a plus sign, it goes up once I pass the breakpoint. And the breakpoint for this one is when omega 2 equals 1, right? Setting the real and imaginary parts equal. So this breakpoint is at omega equals a half. Okay, so for small omegas, the, the constant dominates. 20 log of 1 is 0 dB, so I'm starting here at the 0 dB axis. And then at, when I get to a half, things go upward, start going up with 20 dB per decade. And then now I need the last term. This is one that will start at 0 dB also for small frequencies, but then it will go down, right? And the break point here is when omega times 200 equals 1, or omega equals 1 over 200. Okay, so that's a much smaller frequency. In fact, this is 1 one hundredth of the break point for the blue curve, so this is two decades to the left, right? Two times, two decades smaller and omega. So let me draw that picture. So now I have the three different pieces and to put them together to get the overall system I just have to to add them up. Right, I've got, got uh, my constant green, my blue that goes along to one half and then breaks up, my red that breaks down. And so I can see for the first, the low frequencies up until 1 over 200, all three are constant so when I add them I get a constant which would be 0 or 6 plus 0 plus 0. So let me uh, make a new graph just down below, and, and we're going to add them on a, a clean axis. So because I have three flat lines, I add them up. I get six plus zero plus zero again. It's six. It's zero up to six dB or six dB up until one over two hundred. At that point, I still have constants for the blue and the green curve, but the red one has a downward slope from in this region from one over two hundred to one over a half. I'm going to get a downward slope with this minus 20 dB per decade. Right, so that looks like this, up and from, from 1 over 200 up until a half, when omega equals a half. Then when I go beyond that, I say, well, I've got the zero, uh, I've got a plus 20 dB and a minus 20 dB, so the blue and the red lines cancel out and things level off again. Right, so I've got a constant curve here, and we want to figure out, well, how far down was that? Well, this is, uh, oops. This distance between the curves is is two decades, right? It's a factor of a hundred in frequency. Right, it's a factor. It's a hundred times bigger in frequency, so that's multiplying by ten twice is two decades. So this overall, if this slope is minus twenty dB per decade, then I've got minus twenty dB per decade times two decades means I had a total drop of minus forty dB. So if I started at 6 and subtracted 40, this line here is now at minus 34 dB. So that's my, my asymptote for the, the high frequencies. I get a flat curve again because the, the uh, numerator has comp starts balancing out the denominator once omega gets big enough. And that makes sense. If we go back and look at the original equation, we can see the numerator and denominator are both first order in omega. So as omega gets really, really big, these two terms on the right will dominate. I'll be left with 1 over uh, 50 here, right? So that's, uh, that. One, if you plug into your calculator, 1 over 50 will give you minus uh, 34 dB. Okay, so let me, let me scroll down so we get the good picture again. But so here's our overall example. This is our Bode plot approximation. The real function would sort of cut corners on it. If I try to draw it here, the real function would be a little bit more like this. 
where it has some gap in the corners and it rounds off a little bit. But this is a pretty good engineering approximation on the log-log scale of what's going on. They say, well, up to some frequency things are constant, and then I attenuate for a while, but then the attenuation levels off, and it's 40 dB below where I started for everything above a half. So it's a very helpful, practical thing, and particularly this idea that rather than try to deal with the whole big thing at once, I can break it into these pieces, and because it's in the log domain, instead of having to multiply things, I just add them. Adding straight lines is a relatively easy way to go. Okay, so there's our example of using the Bode plot, how we break it into the sort of common types of systems, and go on from there. Uh, next time, well, next class, we'll, uh, we'll talk about second-order examples. But that's all for today. I'll see you in class.